Raspberry Pi has been a renowned name when it comes to single board computers. In January, Raspberry Pi created quite the stir by releasing its own microcontroller, the RP2040, along with a development board known as the Raspberry Pi Pico. The RP2040 is a fascinating little chip, and I'd like to show you how to get started. There are plenty of ways to interact with this chip, but let's start with MicroPython since it should be the easiest. In some future episodes, I'll show you C and C++ for those of you who want to work a little closer to the bare metal. Finally, I'd like to show you how to lay out your own board for the RP2040 using, of course, KiCad. Let's jump in. Head to raspberrypi.org and click on Hardware. Then click on Pico and Get Started. Here you can find all of the data sheets and getting started guides. The RP2040 is an impressive chip, but what I find even more impressive is the quality of the Raspberry Pi documentation. All of the docs are easy to navigate and read, so definitely check these out if you want to learn more about the chip and the Pico board. Head to the MicroPython section. Note that while the Pico is capable of running other languages like CircuitPython and Rust, the Raspberry Pi Foundation officially supports MicroPython and C, C++. To run MicroPython on the Pico, we need to first install special firmware. Click to download the UF2 file. To upload the firmware, we need to put the Pico into bootloader mode. Press and hold the boot select button while plugging in the USB cable that's connected to your computer. You should see the Pico enumerate as a rpi-rp2 drive on your computer. Copy the uf2 file that you downloaded and paste it into the top level of that drive. After a moment, the Pico should automatically reboot. It's now running the firmware that lets you use the MicroPython programming language. Don't worry, you only have to do this once at the beginning or if you need to update the firmware whenever a new version gets released. Here's the interesting part. The Raspberry Pi was originally intended to be used as a low-cost desktop replacement running Linux. As such, new versions of Raspbian are now being shipped with all of the tools to program the Pico out of the box. This can give you a ready-made single board computer and microcontroller experience, but for those of you who want to program the Pico from your own computer, I'm going to show you how to do it on Windows. I'm sure the process is very similar on Mac OS and Linux. Right now, Raspberry Pi officially recommends Thonny as the IDE of choice for getting started with MicroPython on the Pico. So let's head to Thonny.org and download the installer for our operating system. Run it and accept all the defaults. When it's done installing, open Thonny. You'll notice that it's a very simple editor. It's meant to be much like the Arduino IDE, but for MicroPython. It's very easy for beginners to navigate and use. At the bottom right, you should see the target listed. I have Python installed on my computer, so it shows up here. If I click the button, you'll get a list of the available target platforms. Make sure your Pico is plugged in, otherwise you won't see these listed. Click MicroPython for Raspberry Pi Pico. This should cause a new interactive environment to start in the shell tab at the bottom of the IDE. This is a very simple command shell known as REPL or read evaluate print loop that runs on the Pico when we install the MicroPython UF2 firmware. We can interact with this REPL over the serial port via USB. Let's try a simple Python command. Type print, open parentheses, double quotation mark, hello, double quotation mark, and close parentheses, and then press enter. You should see hello echoed back to you. MicroPython uses many of the same commands as Python 3. Some of the standard Python libraries won't run on such a small device, so MicroPython does not support everything. You can use REPL to try out various commands before you create your program. Now, let's make a simple Hello World program that will execute on our Pico. In the top part of Thonny, enter import uTime. uTime, or potentially muTime or microTime, is similar to the time module in Big Python, but it's been pared down to work with microcontrollers. Next, enter while true colon. This is our main while loop that will run forever on the Pico. Press enter and Thonny will automatically indent the next line. If you haven't worked with Python before, note that indentation matters. 
We don't have curly braces to enclose sections of code under loops and if statements, so we rely on indentation. Everything at this one tab level of indentation is considered to be part of the while loop. Now enter print, open parentheses, double quotation mark, hello, comma, world, exclamation point if you wish, double quotation mark, close parentheses, which is just like the print statement we saw earlier. This will print out hello world over the serial connection. Under that, type utime.sleep, open parentheses, 1.0, close parentheses. This calls the sleep function in the utime module, which will delay the processor for the given amount of time in seconds. It works with floating point numbers, so we can enter 1.0 to mean one second. Click the run button and you'll be asked where you would like to save the file. We want to run it on our Pico, so let's click that button. The Pico has a small file system that allows us to save Python programs and modules to use as libraries. You can name the file anything and still run it from Thony. However, if you name the file main.py in the top level directory, it will automatically run every time the Pico is rebooted, so I'll name it that. Click OK and the program should start running, printing hello world to the console once per second. Note that right now, the program is only saved to the Pico board. I highly recommend clicking File, Save As, and saving a copy of your work to your computer in case you accidentally overwrite it on your Pico. I'll name it hello.py as the name does not need to match the file name on the Pico. At the moment, the Pico is looping in our program. To do anything else with the Pico, we need to stop the program. You can either click the stop button or press Ctrl C to end the program and return to the REPL. Now I can click on File Open Pico to view the files in my Pico. Note that this is a very simple file browser. I can right click on files to delete them or I can right click to create a new folder. This will be important later for creating libraries. Back in main.py, let's blink an LED. We'll import the machine library at the top. Machine is a standard module that's found in most MicroPython applications. You don't need to explicitly import it on the Pico, but I like to do so here as a reminder that we're using it. Note that I can create comments with the hash mark. Anything after that symbol on the line is a comment. Before our while loop, let's create an LED variable, which will be a handle to our pin object. We call pin from the machine module and tell it which pin we want to use and that we want to configure it as an output. The Raspberry Pi Pico datasheet has a great pinout of the board on page 5. The onboard LED is attached to GP25, which is why we use 25 for our pin number. Back in our code, let's change the while loop to flash the LED. We'll remove the print statement and add LED.value open parentheses 1 close parentheses. This calls the value method function in our LED object, which is a digital write. One means turn on, or change the pin voltage to 3.3 volts. We then sleep for one second and call LED.value again. This time we pass it zero, which means turn the pin off, or set the voltage to ground. Finally, we sleep for another one second. Let's run this on our Pico. You probably will not be asked to save it again as it's already saved as main.py on the board. However, you're welcome to save it to your computer with a different file name, like blinky.py. You should see the green LED on the Pico board happily flashing on and off each second. I hope this has helped you get started running MicroPython programs on your Raspberry Pi Pico. Remember that at this time, it's still a fairly new board, so it may not work with some of the random MicroPython examples you find out there on the internet. But on the next episode, I'll show you how to grab some random code, in this case a module, load it into your program, and use it to read temperature data from a sensor over I2C. Stay tuned.